Hey, what's up? David Cohen here for Learn Now Facts, and welcome back to another exciting Fusion tutorial. And today, we're going to be taking a look at our latest plugin, Intensity. So let's check it out. So this plugin adds intense colorization and an alpha channel to pre-matted elements. So I, before we even get started, I want to thank my friends Brian Ray and Sam Treadway for helping out with this plugin. I'll explain right now what both of them did. Brian, he has a lot of patience. He taught me all I know about these fuses, about how to write them, about how they work. And I really appreciate that he took his time before even this whole global crisis started to teach me about them. And thanks, Brian. I couldn't have done it without you. And Sam Treadway, what he did, he improved the vibrance algorithm by a lot. He actually put a lot of work into it. And thanks to him, you have not one, but four different vibrance algorithms at your disposal. And not only that, he improved a lot of the functions here. And he also added this pre-colorization tab here. And I'm going to explain in a moment what it does. And thanks, thanks Sam. I couldn't have done it without you either. And of course, I'd also like to thank the entire WSL community for testing and all my friends, and thanks guys, it's it's been a great experiment for this fuse. So this is actually a fuse, so what does it mean a fuse? A fuse is basically a plugin that works in the free version of Fusion. The plugin is free, and if you're watching this video now, this fuse is available on Reactor, you can get it for free over there. And a fuse is a plugin that works in the free version of Fusion. Most plugins do not work in the free version of Fusion or Resolve, but fuses do. So now I'm going to start explaining how this works. So here is a regular shockwave from Video Copilot's from Video Copilot's pack. That they come without any color. And basically what this fuse does, I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm going to go to the media pool and I have two of these shockwaves here. So I'm just going to look at one. Go here. So here's our shockwave. Let's make a single viewer. All right, so here's our shockwave. And if I want to add some color, you could use color curves. You could use, there are different lots of curves for this. And I have to say something out front that this doesn't, this isn't only for shockwaves. You can use it for a whole bunch of other elements, smoke, dust, fire. And I'm going to put a link in the description where you can get a free pack of smoke, dust, fire elements online. It's completely legit free. It's from a website hosted by Shutterstock, very great place called Premium Beats. And I think they have at least 30 elements there, if not more, that you guys can play with and you can test this plugin out on. So I'm going to control spacebar after I installed it from Reactor. I'm going to search for TNT, it's intensity. So I'm going to add this and I'm going to send this to the viewer. And as you can see, Right off the bat, it doesn't give any colorization because the default values are the same. So what I'm going to add now, I can add an alpha channel to this to give it make give it some transparency. So I'm just going to open this alpha, and I'm going to click on multiply. As you can see, it has an alpha channel now, and it may look like it loses a little bit of detail, but it doesn't. So if I right click, and I'll turn off the checkered underlay. This doesn't get rid of the alpha channel, it just shows the alpha as a black background. So if I check and uncheck, you'll see that it doesn't lose any detail. It stays the same. So I'm going to leave the unmultiply on now. And let me just show you one more thing. And options, I'm going to turn the checkered underlay back on. So you have this alpha gain. So if you bring it up, it brings the alpha, some of the alpha back. And you bring it down. And I'm going to turn off the checkered underlay again. We'll need it in a moment. So here you have the pre-colorization. And this pre-colorization tab is very important. So if you have an element that's already colored, like let's say the, um, like a fire element, and you want to change the color, and you don't want to add to the same color, you want to change the color completely, you would have to bring the saturation down, and you would add color from the color tab here, colorize. And if you say, like, get elements from the extinction pack from FilmRide, then they're already pre-colored, which is a little bit inconvenient, but it has very nice color to it, but you just want to change the color. You would bring down the saturation, and this is basically everything that happens before you add the color and the vibrance. I'm just going to close that for a moment. 
and you click on this show advanced and you can add the color that you want so you pick this color and the vibrance is set to zero by default so i'll bring it up and you have different kinds of vibrance here you have basic so you can bring up the vibrance it looks pretty nice you have advanced and the advanced you should bring down you shouldn't play with that that much and this one's actually pretty cool this one goes good with reds and you also have power now power you can bring up the the vibrance and you have four different kinds and i would advise playing with all of them depending on your element i would try all of them because for different elements each one works differently and thanks again to sam for making for making four different vibrance algorithms you put a lot of work into this so i'm going to leave it at vibrant at the moment and the power looked good for this one but none the matter let me show you some more controls here so here you have the basic stuff like gain you can bring the gain up or down you have gamma you can bring up the gamma you bring it down make a little bit like contrast like that yeah so i'm just going to grab another element that shows this better here's another shock wave this one is i think number 17 don't take my word for it i'm not sure so here is our shock wave so I'm going to bring it like a green color, maybe, and bring the gamma back. And power, I think, does good for this one. You can try advanced. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And with the pre-colorization, you can try bringing the color down. You can try bringing the gain down a little bit before you add. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, so I think the proxy is on right now. And one other setting you have here is the invert setting. And you didn't really see much. Watch, see? So basically, it inverts the luminance of the element. So if I uncheck this, so if I set this to like vibrant, right? You can't really see much. Let's try basic. You need to find a setting that shows you how, how well it works. So it makes the dark makes the highlights dark and it makes the shadows light so it inverts the luminance channel of the image so i can so as you can see it inverts it if i turn on the checkered underlay for a moment because our because our unmultiply is still on you can see what it looks like okay now if i uncheck it you will see we'll get a light colored background and advanced isn't best for this basic is the best for this one and bring the vibrance a bit down and i would advise bringing up gamma when you're in this setting yeah there it is so if you uncheck the checkered underlay you can as you can see it looks a little bit like a fringe but it isn't a fringe this is meant this way that when you're using a light colored background it looks a lot better like this looks almost like ink in water at this point so you can change the color you can give it red it looks good you can give it blue looks very nice i'm gonna leave it here somewhere yeah so it looks like ink in water very very nice colorization and it looks pretty cool but if without the underlay it looks a little bit like a fringe if i turn the checkered underlay off again yeah so it looks a little bit like a fringe. So I'm going to just leave it and turn off the invert and show you how to use this. Oh yeah, bring the gamma back to where it was. And nothing else we played with here, right? So you can bring up the vibrance a bit more. And you can you try using the vibrance setting. And if you're using the vibrance setting in blue, I would advise keeping it a little bit closer to white. So that's pretty cool. Now we can try using other footage here from the free pack that I was telling you about. So we have this fog. This is 4K, both of them. And we have these particles here, sparks. And we used these in our project files quite a while ago. So I'm just going to take this to intensity and pipe this into here. It'll take a while to load. So here's our fog. It looks pretty good. If you bring it to deeper blue, it looks nice. 
and red you can try red but vibrant and this smoke doesn't look very cool together so basic looks interesting you could try advanced advanced is like very bright that's pretty cool you can unmultiply this as well instead of setting it to screen because when you set it to screen you lose detail but this way you don't lose much detail at all so you can play with the alpha gain now there is another element I wanted to show you guys. This one's actually should be cool to play with. Yeah, so let's try setting it to blue. Yeah, it's barely moving because it was in slow motion even without this and it's 4K. So you can try on multiplying this as well. It gives you a nice transparent background. Now, we have a, a clip of particles here, and particles is something that you would want to have alpha channel for, so this is good for adding an alpha channel. And one thing, bring it closer to blue, one thing I forgot to tell you guys is that you can use, like let's say if you don't want to add color, right, when you grab this tool by default, all of the controls are regular so if you look at this to this you only want to add let's say you only want to add an alpha channel so you can just go to alpha and just the alpha channel that's all you adjust and if it already has an alpha channel and you just want to add color you can just add color there you just have color you can add color and vibrance but if it already has color you can leave it at default and the black, as you can see, the black isn't really black. It'll just keep the color at where it was. White will add some gain to it. So if you already have color and you want to keep the color and you just want to add vibrance, you can bring up the vibrance setting and that will add some vibrance. You can just use this as a color correction tool. If you don't want to add any color, you can use vibrance and alpha. So a bunch of different possibilities. Okay, so I'm going to grab another file. We have this fire here, and we have another clip of fire that I can demonstrate this on. This is going to look pretty cool, actually. So let's just get a new instance of this it's intensity node, and I'm going to look at our fire. Now, if I want to change the color of this fire, right, and I just want to show you how easy it is to recreate the color of this fire, like a bright, hot orange. So I'm going to show this advanced. I'm going to bring the color closer to orange. And they're just going to bring up the vibrance, and we have our color. That was the color that was originally look. This is the color that it was, and this is what the intensity recreated. It looks a little bit hotter. Now, if I want to change the color, I don't want it to be orange. So I brought the saturation down, and I want to make it something like a blue, like from the Fantastic Beast movie. So if I go here. I can bring it closer to like purple like this. So you bring it closer to white when you're using this. You can try blue. Yeah, so you have this nice vibrant blue fire. Very nice, very, very realistic like. So you can also unmultiply this and you have it on a transparent background. That's pretty cool. And here's another clip of fire. Let's look at it in the viewer. So these are, I believe, 4K files. So that's why it takes a while. Yeah, it's full 4K. It's cinema 4K DCI. So I can turn off the unmultiply and we have... Oh, you see, that's the little problem with the, the files that you have on that side. But it's not, not a big deal. I just add this cool color. You can make it purple, I guess, but i never seen something like this. Not even in the films. Make it green. Maleficent color, right? You can make it orange. So now it's all on alpha. So I hope you guys enjoyed this new plugin. You can get it for free on Reactor, and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.